everyone welcome to my channel Utsav and Kala and this is your crafty host Priyanka I hope you guys haven't forgotten me I just have been gone for a whole year now and I'm really sorry about it but before I forget happy new year to you all I know my husband just said that the new year is already old but uh, it's still new it's still six days or I think um seven days whenever you guys are watching it it's still a new year and i am really 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 excited to be making new videos again um i know i left the last video kind of incomplete and i haven't gotten back to thinking of finishing that video yet because i lost my files and it's a whole bunch of thing and 2019 was not a very good year for me and for my youtube channel because i was just in this phase of doing a lot of things like i plan to homeschool my son so we started homeschooling routine and i wanted to finish uh, get him into a routine for homeschool and then uh, get back to doing my videos but then once we got into the routine uh, my mom fell ill and uh, we had to go to see these doctors every every day we're doing going to a physio and we're going to see back doctor heart specialist and all this uh, people that we are meeting and uh, her primary doctor and it's just so much going on and we still don't know what's, what was wrong with her because every result was like oh everything was normal which was good on one part that everything was normal but we couldn't figure out figure out what was wrong with her because she had a swelling on her leg which wouldn't go away so it was just a whole bunch of issues and by the time we got back to our routine it was already December and it was just too much time gone by so uh, I'm really sorry guys I I hope um, that I would be able to do better this year and I would be able to post videos consistently and I plan to do that hopefully God willing I would plan to I would love to uh, put out more videos and more consistent videos and yeah that's about it guys and i have all read all the comments that you guys posted on my videos and um i was just not in the right state of mind to reply it was just hard on me to reply to you guys because I was not in the right frame to just, you know, I would I didn't want to say, okay, thank you, or just like these one word answers. I wanted to really write back, but I just did not have the, the I don't know, it was just this feeling I did not have to write a good answer or reply back with something nice because it was just so much going on. So I hope you guys understand, but really thank you so much for commenting on my videos watching my videos throughout the year even though i did not i was not able to post uh videos that much i really 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 appreciate you guys so much so once again i hope that this 2020 brings something good for me for my youtube and i am able to post more consistent videos because in the last three years that i have been on youtube I have always been on and off with starting with my son being born and then him being in the hospital and then uh, us moving to another house and it just has been one thing after the other and I haven't been able to be consistent like with my job and then me losing my job and it was just a whole whole thing whole three years that have just gone by and I haven't been able to make myself that consistent and I hope and I pray that I be more consistent this year onwards and uh, I hope you guys support me because it is your love that keeps bringing me back to YouTube so I'm really 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 appreciative of all of you out there who support me who watch my videos who are my subscribers and who have stayed along all this while um, I really 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 appreciate you guys so uh, let's get into what we're going to do today and obviously you have read the title so it's uh, Uttrayan is coming up. Uttrayan is an Indian festival 
uh, where we fly kites and we make uh, we fly kites and we make um, nice watch nice food like undiu undiu is one of my favorite veggies gujarati veggies and i just love it it is an authentic gujarati veg veggie and it it is just you take all these beautiful vegetables and put it together and add spices and it's so much fun to make uh now that we live here uh in america it's uh harder to make the authentic um undiu because sometimes you get the veg get those veggies sometimes you don't get those veggies sometimes you're so busy that it's it's a time consuming um dish to cook so my mom has come up with this uh instant undiu and i re really enjoy making it it's so easy so quick but i'm just getting off track but that's my favorite veggie uh and i always wait um for winter to come when she makes it a lot and i try to make it i can't make it as good i try to make it so yeah um what we're going to do is we're going to make a painting based on uttrayan where we are going to where we fly kites it's a kite flying day in india it usually falls on the 14th or 15th of january or uh, and usually they uh, we fly kites two days but one of the two days is a holiday i know that so uh yeah without further ado let's see the project uh here is my kite if you guys can see and uh this painting is inspired by jemini roy so i used her his painting uh teen pujarin and um i made this this is my first kite i'm going to make three of these and um i think for this video and by the end of this video i'll only be done with two and the third one i will definitely show you on my next video for sure so this is um the first lady and why i like jemini roy paintings is because um it helps me and it oh i it helps me overcome my fear of making human figures uh drawing human figures because i'm really bad at it but but yeah it i really really those paintings help me overcome my fear of making human human figures so i really love his drawings you should check out check out jemini roy on google he has this amazingly simple human figures that we can draw anybody can draw anyone who's learning anybody can draw it and uh the facial features are the main thing um that uh, hurts me the most but he really makes it very easy like his facial features are not complicated that's why i really love his paintings you should check out on google jemini roy uh he is an ama he was an amazing artist uh yeah so that's what we're going to make the decorative kite and i will have all the materials in the description for you guys to check out and also the drawings for these um kites i will have them on my blog for you guys to download if you want it is a 12 by 12 drawing so it might be harder to print on a regular printer um but i like i said i just took the jemini roy painting teen pujarin and gave it my own twist and separated the three ladies on uh did three different kites and that's about it i, I didn't uh, and added a little bit of feature because i think some of them were hidden behind so you could not see the half hand or half body or something like that and i just added that part to make three complete ladies so yeah uh, check it out if you want i will definitely post them on my blog the drawings but uh the, uh printing them on your regular printer at home would be a little bit harder because they are 12 by 12 a square paper so yeah so let's jump into the tutorial enough talking let's jump into the tutorial all right guys so let's begin um with this tutorial and i have a 12 by 12 inch chipboard that i have I've taken two chipboards and stuck them together with glue gun hot glue gun and now we are going to take some masking tape or painter's tape I have I had this handy but if you have to purchase it 
I would highly suggest to buy the broader one because it'll make your work easier. But right now I had this handy, so I didn't want to buy anything new. So I just ended up using the skinny one. Handy. So all I'm going to do first is take tape the four corners of the chipboard. So here I have kept the painter's tape half out. So all I'm going to do is bend it over on the other side and then cut off the excess that I have here or just take it around. And I'm going to do it on all four sides and then come back and show you the next. All right, so here I have done all four sides, uh, covered the all four sides of the chipboard. And as I was mentioning earlier, I'm using a heavier quality chipboard that I purchased from Amazon. But obviously this was what I had handy. Uh, I purchased it like three years ago and it was on my shelf and I used it. If you don't have... Uh, chipboard handy you can use use something uh some cardboard but some cardboard you can instead of doing two layers you can do it three layers to make it more sturdy but just because it is going to be a decoration in my house i wanted it to be on chipboard and i had this handy so i used it like i said in this project i have used everything that i had handy i did not purchase anything from the market or any store or any shop whatever i had whatever i'm using i have been having it for years so now the next step would be to cover the whole chipboard on one side with masking tape and here is where uh, a thicker masking tape would be more handy because it'll be faster and more easier to stick um, because if you're doing just by yourself it's easier to just stick thicker ones and if you like it's one inch or half inch it'll i think this is half inch if you have one inch then it'll just probably take four or five and you'll be done so that's what we're going to do we're just going to cut the tape uh, and then just flip flap the excess over on the back side and we're going to cover the whole board similarly and i'm going to finish that and for you guys it will not be a minute because it'll be the magic of the camera but for me it'll take a minute i'm going to finish it and we'll be back in a flash all right guys so before we go into the drawing for this painting here is my whole chipboard already masked with the masking tape and i did start don't worry i didn't start without you guys i was trying and trying and my camera kept stopping and i'd already placed this shoot i couldn't do anything about it but uh, what i realized when i was looking through the previous video was that it was not clear how to do the masking tape because it just got it was too close up close so all you need to do is take a masking tape and then place it lengthwise all or, all over and then when you have excess on the side you just uh, stick the excess on the back side so that will be um, how the masking tape will go on the chipboard also a thicker chipboard like i mentioned would be much easier the next thing is that i drew the uh, drawing on a piece of paper first and then traced it onto the um, board masking tape because I like to erase my drawing a lot of times like and it was a figure drawing and I am not good at portrait drawing that much I'm not going to good at drawing human human figures and I need to erase it like a million times before I can even get close to what I did right now so it's um it's a serious no-no for me to directly draw onto the masking tape because if you need to erase it will leave a black spot it will not get erased completely that's the reason why i drew it on a piece of paper first and then i traced it onto the chipboard if you're really good at drawing you can definitely go ahead and uh, draw it directly onto the masking tape if you don't need the eraser that much but i do need it i am really bad at it so anyways um this is the drawing and if you guys want it i will have it in uh, i will have it on my blog and i will have the link in the description for you guys to check out uh, the drawings so that's that and now we are going to need our roll of jute and our glue gun so my glue gun is already heated up and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you only a sh small portion what we're going to do is take the jute first and measure where we're going to place it measure it and then take a pair of scissors 
and then snip it off and then take our hot glue gun which cools down really fast during winter and it's winter right now so you just take uh, place it on a little portion first and then place start placing your jute on it and then slowly add more hot glue and uh, finish the line so I'm just going to do this one line to show you guys and here I joined it and we are going to cover the whole painting with this jute first except her eyes nose lips and ears we don't want to cover the facial features because it's too small and the jute is too thick uh, for uh, the facial features to be covered with the jute so that's why I want to leave it off for now we're just going to cover the whole painting first with jute and then I'll come back with the next step so once you have completed all the line work and you have gotten all the jute placed where you wanted it to be placed what we're going to do is take a metallic gold paint and we are going to, I'm using the folk art metallic antique gold the number is 658E and I'm just going to take the metallic paint in a in a I'm just going to use a, a cheap quality brush this is not I think this is Dela Rowney actually uh, if you can see mm -hmm. Dela Rowney flat shader and I don't have the number on it but just any brush that you're comfortable using and all you're going to do is you're going to paint on the onto the jute and don't worry about uh, you don't need that much water for this don't worry about um, the paint you know you're like here if it goes it touches the masking tape it's okay because we're going to cover it with paper so we're just going to go ahead and color it um, make sure it you just color the whole of the jute because um, the I mean it looks good natural too but I just wanted to give it a gold tone uh, to make it more uh, what you can say more traditionally go ahead and finish that and then we'll head on to the next step so here I have completed the coloring for the gold color and it's done completely and because it is a craft paint it dries really quickly about 10 minutes of wait time and it was already dry and for me to move on to the next step. So the next step is to get these um, metallic sheets or um, in India they are used for um, packaging the sweets the Indian sweet boxes and um, or you can call it the holographic papers but um, in India definitely uh, you get it um, in specialty paper stores uh, these are I don't know if they are used now but my mom said that these were used uh, earlier on these were used to cover um, expensive uh, expensive sweet boxes so that's uh, though these papers are called mithai paper in um, what we called it mithai paper but uh, you can also call it holographic sheets or um, metallic sheets but um, if you guys don't if you are in USA and if you don't find this I will link to my Etsy store in I will leave a link to my Etsy store in the description for you guys and you will have a, a uh, I will have these uh, linked there. Uh, I have five colors available as of now and I think they only come in these basic five colors. Uh, pink, green, blue, gold and silver. So I have all five of them and I will leave my Etsy shop link in the description and you guys can check these paper out. So for the next step what we're going to do is we're going to start applying these paper on the, on the spaces. So for now, um, I, I want to do this part of the kite silver. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sheet and this is a, I've cut a larger sheet into a smaller um, size just for me to be comfortable while um, doing this, um, while cutting out little shapes. 
uh, to apply. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just crease it uh, and then I'm going to make that shape and this exactly looks like a pizza but I'm going to just crease it and make that shape and then I'm going to um, just take a pair of scissors and cut this out. I'm just going to cut a little bit bigger than where my crease is so that it fits properly if you cut it exactly onto the crease it might be a little bit smaller so just cut it a little bit bigger so i'm just going to i don't know if you guys can see if i'm out of the frame okay so put here and then, and then so here's uh, my cut sheet right here and then I'm going to take some clear tacky glue and uh, you can use um, E6000 I'm using tacky because that I had that handy but if you have E6000 I would greatly recommend the E6000 because that will make it long lasting and um, the chances of the paper coming off or not sticking properly doesn't come up with uh, E6000 E6000 is really strong uh, and even if you are in USA and it's uh, if you go to Dollar Tree, they have this glue all in one and that's also an industrial glue and you get it for a dollar even though the tube is a little bit smaller. I think that would work well too. So here I have attached the paper. So here I have attached uh, the silver paper. Uh, that I cut out and similarly we are just going to go ahead and do that in all the spaces and uh, you can choose the color combination according to your painting I um, am going to keep um, mine almost similar uh, to the other two paintings other uh, other kites that I have made so I'm just going to go ahead and complete this whole picture applying these sheets on to the kites and I'm uh, and I'll come back and show you the next step here I just wanted to give you a close-up I have completed applying the paper everywhere and this is actually not the one that I was showing you earlier where I put the jute on and I showed you how to put the uh, paper on uh, but it is my second kite that I had been working on while making this video and I had already started decorating it and I'm going to just continue uh, decorating this and show you how to decorate uh, this kite and um, because I wanted to get this video out and um, decided that I might not be able to finish all three of them but I can at least finish two and the third one I will show you in my next video uh, completed and um, hung up on the wall where I want to put it in my house. And one more thing before uh, we go on to the decorations, I did not have any black, uh, black metallic paper so I just used construction paper, no actually not construction, ca black cardstock for the hair of the lady. And that's what I'm using for the black uh, hair. So for the video purposes and just because I want to show a little bit of decoration because uh, this painting is something that you can totally customize and uh, you don't have to copy exactly what I did, how I did. And you, like I mentioned earlier, use the materials that you have handy. And this is all that I had handy at home. Um, also because I sell this items on Etsy, all the most of the materials I sell on Etsy. So that's the reason why I had so much wide variety of um, nine stones and ball chains and rhinestone chains and everything. If you guys don't have it, it's okay. Use what you have at home. Do not feel pressured to use what I have used. Um, it's just what I had handy. Okay, you can have some special piece, some special um, 
um, jewelry piece that is broken and you really like it and you can incorporate that also in here and I might do a video on that also how you can work with this kind of painting and use your broken jewelry sorry guys I had to cut off because my son decided to look into the camera and then he saw that uh, he could not see my face in the camera so he picked up the phone and then turned it towards me so I had to cut it off but I'm going to show you how to uh, decorate the center and uh, like I mentioned earlier you don't have to do it exactly the way I do it you can use whatever materials you have available at home to um, decorate your paint okay so here I'm going to take a little bit of um, glue on my tweezer and just place a 6mm rhinestone in the center then I'm going to add a little bit of glue and I've already pre-cut uh, my rhinestone chain and I'm using this turquoise blue rhinestone chain and um, this is available on my Etsy store for purchase if you guys are interested in purchasing but this is uh, what I have handy and I'm using it for this project so I've already pre-cut a small piece right here and then it's easier with the help of a tweezer even though it just falls differently or it falls on the side it's easier to just maneuver with the tweezer and bring it closer to the rhinestone then do it with the fingers so here I'm just going to maneuver it with tweezers and easily bring it closer to the rhinestone and make a clean circle and then next we are going to use this golden ball chain right here and I have already pre-cut it too and this is also available on my Etsy store if you guys are interested in purchasing and now I'm going to again apply glue and um, make sure that you apply if you're using a tacky glue or any school glue make sure you apply a lot of it uh, because it's clear so it's not going to be seen once it dries up but that will help it from um, not falling off so I did apply a lot but then I realized that this ball chain is a little bit smaller than the one that I need so I'm just going to cut a little bit more I didn't measure it usually I measure it I didn't measure it I just eyeballed it and it it's a little bit smaller so I'm just going to cut up a little small piece of like four small piece right here and I simply love these um, ball chains and rhinestone chains because they're so easily um, you can cut them with uh, your um, regular pair of scissors instead of you know getting some tools to cut them and something fancy these are really easy and they uh, give a very good look to the painting so as you can see there's a lot of glue but it will eventually dry up and everything will be fine and then at last we are going to add these small half cut tube beads and these were given to me by a colleague friend where I worked at back in um, in the store where I worked at back in 2013 2013-2014 um, she was um, she was um, an old uh, she is actually she's still my friend um, she was not going to uh, she and her friend did uh, beading and had a lot of beads and then um, she they decided they're not going to do it no more and she saw me working with a lot of beads and she said well if you're interested I can give you all my um, all the beads that I have and you can have it with no, without any cost and she just gave it to me and I thought it might be a little bit but she gave me like two big totes full of beads and I was like wow that's a lot of beads and I was really excited and thankful to her for giving me that um, beads so here I'm just placing these uh, what I've done is I've just placed glue all around 
um, and then I'm just placing these um, tube beads with the help of the tweezer makes it easier and if you have a little bit of a glue on the tweezer it will help uh, to pick up the beads better so that also makes it easier and it just looks like a beautiful sunburst and I love these tube beads because they are so irregular in shape and size that um, it just gives it a natural look instead of a handmade look actually and um, just by placing them you know and again uh, I'm repeating myself again and again you guys don't have to copy what I do you can do and it's also according to what drawing you're using uh, obviously I will have all the drawings on my website and I will have the link of the website in the descri description for you guys to check out so here my center is done this is what I'm going to keep for my center and then let's look at let me just show you the big leaf here so so I'm going to just show you this bigger leaf uh, how I did decorate that one um, just in case when I'm showing you the complete painting um, you don't I don't know if it will cover the whole um, section or no properly. So I'm just placing a big 6mm red rhinestone here. And then I'm going to take my glue and place some glue here on top of it. And then I'm going to take some clear 4mm rhinestones and I'm just going to place them around it. And I hope you guys can see and my hands are not in the way. And then I'm going to place dots here. Two, three and probably one more, four. So I'm going to place four alternate rhinestone, four mm. So I'm going to take red first since the first line, since it's closer to the white to the clear so I'm going to put red here and then it'll be I'll alternate it with the white 4 mm so I have a red 4 mm white 4 mm and then again a red 4 mm I think I'll place a couple more than just four probably six of them and then a white and then I'll just end it with the red one And that's how I decorated my leaf and I'm not worried about all this excess glue it just it'll just dry up and it'll dry up clear so you won't nobody will be able to see it I'm just putting excess glue because I don't want the rhinestones to fall off so that's it uh, guys I'm going to show you a little bit of decoration and I did do a little bit of decoration I'm going to go ahead and finish this off and then come back with the next step of um what to do next for the table so see you guys in a bit all right guys so i'm still working on finishing up my second uh painting uh, for decorations and um i wanted to quickly go ahead and finish up shooting the video so i decided i'm going to do this before i show you guys how it looks completed so this is a triangle uh cut out from a cardboard and then i have covered it with uh masking tape on both sides and i have used uh, this is not a chipboard a uh, high quality chipboard it's a duplo box that duplo lego box that my parents gave to my son for christmas and i have used uh, the box to make these triangles and um, use the same masking tape to cover it up on both sides and then what i'm going to do is here i have a completed triangle and the measurements for the triangle is this eat both the sides are three inches and then um, you measure on both the sides three inches and then join it in the middle I think it'll be about six inches uh, the bottom will be about six inches so um, six yeah it'll be six inches I think it'll be six inches but uh, these two sides here on the upper sides they are three inches each 
So what I've done here is I have, you can still see the glue. I was working on it. I have uh, applied um, the holographic sheets on both the sides, back and front. And then I have decorated the tail and this is going to be our tail for the kite. And it's going to look like this. I've, I've kept it simple, nothing fancy. And then I've also cut out a one inch circle from the gold holographic sheet and then placed it in the middle and then gave it a little bit of decorate, decoration. So this is going to be transformed into this. This is for my second kite, the tail, and this is for my third kite. I'm still working on it. So as you guys know, my third kite is still work in progress. My second is almost done. So this is this. So here and I've completed my second kite. And as promised, I am going to give you a quick look at how I decorated the lady on my second kite. And she is the one that's holding the garland right here instead of the first one that is holding a lamp. And the third one, like I mentioned earlier, I'm just going to show you completed in my next video because it was not going to be possible to finish it uh, in time, which I'm really sorry for because sometimes I it just gets harder for me to do things on time. And this is how she looks like. And then now we're going to see how we're going to join the tail of the kite and then here and then do the finishing work uh, for the string and everything. So, I'll so be here back. I okay. have removed uh, the excess glue that was on the side and uh, now it's stuck firmly onto the kite and the tail is stuck. Now the next step we need is to get this um, ribbon. You can use any ribbon if you don't have this specific one. This is called Tui in India, uh, that's what we call it, Tui. But um, if you don't find anything, you can just put a, a, a take a golden ribbon uh, to make the kite or any color that suits your uh, kite. You know, it's not necessary. You need to take golden ribbon. But I have cut an 18 inch long um, ribbon. And what I'm going to do is, let me move this on the side. So uh, we'll take the ribbon and then here I have cut this these bow, six bows, two of each color, so blue, uh, pink and green. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place uh, this in the center here. Uh, if you can see right here, I'm just going to apply a little bit of glue in the center and then place the ribbon on top of it. I'm going to leave a little bit of space just uh, because some of it will go underneath uh, the tail uh, to attach it to the kite. And then what I'm going to do is take the other piece and apply glue. Actually, I'll just apply glue to the one that I have already um, placed on the one that I've already placed on the ribbon, the ribbon on. And I'm just going to apply a lot of glue. And... This paper uh, works well with glue. It doesn't like, uh, it's a little bit thick, but it's not that thick, but it still does work well good with the glue. And I'm just going to place the tail properly again here. So I have applied glue. Then I'm going to take my other piece of the bow that I've made and I'm going to align it with this, the one that had the previous one aligned with the first one. And then just press it down. And if you press it down, the glue, because it's liquid, it'll just flow to all the edges. So you don't really have to apply a lot, but you need to apply a generous amount for it to flow. So I'm just going to press it down and it'll eventually dry up and stop moving. But... If you feel like, see here, you can see there's a white uh, line. You can just trim it after the glue has dried to make it look even. So that's what I'm going to do after it's dried. Here I have some 6mm rhinestones. And I did not have it in the color blue, so I'm just using purple. And what we're going to do is I'm going to place the red one.
Actually, I'm going to place the purple on the green one. I'm going to alternate colors so they don't merge uh, into the same color. So I'm applying the purple in the green one. And then for the pink one, I'm going to apply green. right here and then for blue i'm just going to take tacky and apply the pink one and i'm just going to let it dry tacky takes a whole bunch of time to dry so uh, i'm going to let it dry and then we're just going to take our hot glue gun and then uh, at the on the back side right here where you can see my finger i'm going to apply hot glue gun and stick the edge of the uh, ribbon right here coming out like this so i'm going to go ahead and finish that and then show you the completed cut. here at the top and i'm going to add a six inch of uh, this golden ribbon that i used just because i um, don't want to attach a two-way tape so i have attached this loop and i'm going to just take a whole bunch of um hot glue gun hot glue not hot glue gun hot glue and then just attach the ribbon at the base at the top corner in a loop shape and then add a little bit of more hot glue on top of it just to secure the ribbon and then i'm going to let it dry now this uh, back of my um, kite looks kind of shabby with all the uh, messy edges right here of the it's not much on this, this side, but on this side, if you can see, there's a whole bunch of messy edges and I don't want the back side to be looking uh, unfinished. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a 12 by 12 cardstock and I'm just going to place it right here and glue it on the back. My completed two kites and the third one will go right here in the middle uh, of both and she, it will be like underneath the two kites. So here is the first up close kite, the first one that I made. And I've kept everything uh, similar, uh, did not change much of the designing part of it. So I'm slowly moving it down. And then I have also added a push pin here to attach the string in one direction and it's not flowing around. And then like right here, I'm going to move up to the second one. And this is the one that we did together, almost all of it uh, together. And then the third one, I will have it by the next video that uh, I am going to put up. We'll have, definitely have the third one hanging right there in the middle. And this probably will be the final spot till I decide where else I want to move these kites to but this is how they look like and uh, i hope you like this video i know i have uh, become a little bit rough uh, with uh, an un uh, what you can say not proper about video shooting now because it's been a year that i have shot a video so i'm really sorry if it's confusing leave me a comment below and ask me questions if you have, want to know something else about it also, uh, don't forget uh, to hit that like button because um, it would mean a lot to me. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a like. If you have any questions or concerns, I will have my social media links in the description for you guys to check out. And uh, let me know. Question me in the comments or at on social media, wherever it's comfortable for you guys. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And hit that bell button to keep, stay in the loop of all the new videos i post don't forget to share this video with your friends and family uh, and let me know in the comments how you like this idea what i could have done differently to make it easier or what do you think was so simple that i could have totally Father. skipped it uh, let me just know what you what your thoughts are on this paintings uh, thank you so much guys i love you and i greatly appreciate all of you sticking by with me uh, through all these years it's all it's already been three years now i have been on youtube so thank you so much guys i really really truly appreciate you all thank you so much and have a wonderful uh, day 
and I will see you in all in my next video. Love you. Bye-bye.